we would like to give a very brief overview of what's new in our CFS Designer software. We've made some significant enhancements, additions, and made some features more user-friendly. Let's take a look at changes to CFS Designer. First, let's cover some of the smaller changes to the software. We've added well over a dozen tooltips to help you better understand what the software does or provide information that may be useful on the selected subject. Here are just a few. Hover over any tooltip icon to display the information. We've also added quick links to CAD drawings, connectors, code reports, and technical topic articles. This is good information that you may find useful while using CFS Designer. Next, we've improved the workspace. You can now organize the workspace alphabetically or by entered order. Just right-click on the main module heading. We've also increased the callout space for models within the workspace, making it easier to read longer names. Custom shapes are also quicker to input with a standard name generator. The standard name is similar to AISI nomenclature, but with an added lip after the flange dimension. The lip dimension is added since the lip may or may not follow AISI standards, depending on your dimensions. You can also customize your name by checking the Customize Name checkbox. The software now has the added ability to bring any of the components from the Wall with Opening module to the Beam Input module by simply right-clicking on the Summary Report component heading or right-clicking on the Opening Display component. A pop-up will appear, allowing you to bring the component into the Beam Input module. We've made some significant improvements to the connections portion of the software. The first thing you'll notice is that we now have triangles and circles for supports. These represent pinned or roller connections. Also, the Reaction Bearing Length section is grayed out if the user opts to design with connections. If the user designs with connections, the software knows if the connection is a shear or bearing connection and calculates accordingly. If connections are turned off, the Reaction Bearing Length section is turned on and bearing will always be checked. Next, you'll notice the connection buttons look different. We've added all Simpson Bypass connectors as well as slip track, slotted track, and base track to the software. The pins and roller supports are defaulted to be bottom pin and all others rollers. However, you can change this by left or right clicking on the support or call out and selecting how you'd like the connection supported. You'll also notice a steel, concrete, and show all radio button. This button limits the choices in the Anchorage dropdown, which we'll review later. The software knows deflection connectors are applicable for roller connections and rigid connections are applicable for pinned connections. If we leave R2 as a roller, all R2 connections will be deflection connections. Selecting the R2 connector button, we are allowed to choose from SCB, MSCB, SC, SSB slide clip, IDCB drift clip, SCW head of wall clip, SCHA bypass clip, DSSCB drift strut, slip or slotted track, and by others. When you select one of these connectors, a drop-down list will display all of the choices for that clip. Here, I've selected an SCB-MSCB clip, and I get a list of 12 choices. The different choices are for different length clips and screw count. Also, behind the connector callout is a percentage. This is the interaction of the connector. Anything over 100% fails and will be grayed out. After selecting the connector, I then select the drop-down box below the connector to select my anchorage. Again, anything over 100% fails and will be grayed out. Also, note the Buy Others option is allowed for anchorage as well. You may want to select the connector and not the anchorage. This option allows you to do this. Now let's look at the R1 connection. If we leave R1 as a pin, all R1 connections will be rigid connections. We're allowed to choose from FCB, FC, FSB bypass clips, DSSCB fixed drift strut, base track, and by others. Again, when you select one of these connectors, a drop-down list will display all of the choices for that clip. Here, I've selected an FCB clip, and I get a list of 10 choices. 
the different choices are for different length clips and screw count. This works the same way as the deflection connections. Anything over 100% fails, and anchorage is chosen after the connector is selected. We've also made some significant changes to the general tab of the wall with opening module. Comparing side by side, let's look at some of the differences. First, we've changed the vertical load section. We've relabeled and configured how this works. Wall self-weight is the first input box. This load is the weight of the wall in pounds per square foot, or PSF. This works the same way the PSF radio button worked before. We've added an exclude self-weight in axial calc. Selecting this button will exclude the self-tributary weight on the typical studs, as well as the jam stud for checking the stud for axial load. It will check the jam for axial load based on the gravity load on the header. Selecting the Exclude Self-Weight button is how the previous version of CFS Designer worked. If you uncheck this button, the tributary self-weight load of the jam or wall stud will be checked with this additional axial load. Please note this button only affects the stud interaction. It will not change the connection design as the tributary load will always be added at the connection. We've also gotten rid of the radio buttons for PLF and PSF and the checkbox for additional stud axial load. You may now combine these loads if needed, all in the vertical load section. Bracing has also been reorganized and separated for wall studs and jam studs. Opening connections have also been enhanced. These work exactly the same way as beam input. The summary report has also slightly changed. We've reorganized a little bit to make this easier to read. The member section was moved to top of the page and highlighted with a box. We've also reorganized the connector section to make it easier to read. Similarly, for the wall with openings module, we've added a reorganized connector section. Two new modules have been added to CFS Designer, Stacked X-Brace and Stacked Shear Wall. These can be accessed by selecting the X-Brace or Shear Walls drop-down icon. Let's look at each one briefly. Also note, we do have simple X-Brace and simple shear wall. These are intended for use with element and component design or other designs where special seismic considerations are not required. The stacked X-Bracing module allows up to eight stories of stacked X-Bracing. The stacked X-Brace module follows AISI S240 and S400. Choose between LRFD and ASD design methods and enter in your load data. Next, enter in the strap data information for each level. Then the cord stud, top track, cord bracing, and hold downs. Please note that the top track is not designed by CFS Designer. It is used for high aspect X braces to determine the moment frame stiffness used to determine cord weak axis moment. Finally, enter in your top and bottom connection information. An output can be created in an easy-to-read, well-organized report. The Stacked Shear Walls module allows up to eight stories of stacked shear walls. Similar to the Stacked X-Brace module, this module follows AISI S240 and S400. LRFD is the only option currently. ASD will be available in the next release. Enter in all your load data, followed by your shear wall data. And finally, your cord stud, cord bracing, and hold downs. An output can be created in an easy-to-read, well-organized report. We strive to make CFS Designer the best software in the industry. If you have any comments or questions, please email us at asksimpson at strongtie.com. We would love to hear your feedback. Please feel free to visit strongtie.com to learn about Simpson Strong Tie's full CFS connector product line.